Welcome ladies and gentlemen to Quick Fix where I tell you all that you need to know before you can finish a cup of joe. When the i20 was launched back in 2008, the idea of a hatchback that cost north of 8 lakh rupees wasn't really heard of and its success of the car even surprised Hyundai, spawning the rise of the premium hatchback segment. Now, like an actor nearing the end of his prime, a lot of younger models have been playing catch-up. So is this facelift just another nose job to stay relevant or is it something more? Well, let's find out. Now when it comes to the exteriors, in the front you have a redesigned front fascia. Starting off with the hood, it's now more muscular, a little bit more angular to give it a little bit more aggression. You have the cascading front grille, you have the tweaked headlamp cluster which now houses the projector lamps, you now get cornering lamps and LED DRLs. If you look at the bumper really closely, you also now have Hyundai's air curtain feature. More on that a little bit later. From the side, the proportions remain the same. You also now have the option of having dual tone colors on the exteriors, not on the model that we have here, however, today. But my favorite external feature of all are these rims, guys. These are 16 inch diamond cut alloys, and I think they look absolutely fantastic. And in the rear, you have a redesigned tail lamp cluster with a lot of muscular lines to finish off the design. Now when it comes to the interiors, well, Hyundai have given the Elite i20 a couple more Elite features. Main highlight being the 7-inch infotainment touchscreen that comes with Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, Mirrorlink and it also has the Arcamis audio system. You also have a reverse parking camera with dynamic guidelines, automatic headlamps and a USB quick charger as well. In addition to that, you also now get access to Hyundai's Auto Link app. Essentially, it's a smartphone application that gives you live telemetry about your car. In addition to that, it sends you a monthly report about how your car's health is doing. You can also schedule service appointments, mark your parking spot and whatnot, which is all very nice. Now, if you're not a fan of the beige interiors of the i20, well, Hyundai has you covered there as well. Like the i20 Active, you can now get the interiors in dual tones as well. You can get it with a combination of black with red inserts or black with orange inserts. Now, the i20 facelift addresses two critiques we've always had with the i20. First off, you now get a rear armrest with dual cup holders, which is nice. But more importantly, we finally have a distance to MP gauge. Yes, the MID display in the i20 has been really comprehensive and given you more information than Wikipedia but could never tell you when you ran out of fuel. It looks like Hyundai has finally listened to our critiques and given us one. And of course, the multi-information display in the instrument cluster behind the steering wheel is utterly, utterly useless. It tells you a whole lot of other things including how to train a dog but forgets to tell you the fuel efficiency or distance to empty. You're welcome, India. Now coming to the way the i20 drives, well the i20 is the ideal city car, checks all the right city car boxes, it's got a nice light steering, it's got supple suspension and it's quite refined and quite comfortable as well. So it's powered by a 1.2 litre petrol or in our case we have the 1.4 litre diesel with us which produces 89 bhp and 220 newton meters of torque and in this case it's made it to a 6 speed manual transmission. This engine and transmission has been around for quite a while, so we're quite familiar with it and there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. But the engine has a variable geometry turbo, so the power delivery is nice and linear and the gearbox itself is nice and slick and using the age-old automotive analogy, slots in like a rifle bolt. It's nice and easy and direct to use. Then there is the refinement of the car. Now, Hyundai really know how to make a car feel nice and refined and gives it a nice air of quality to it. Even though it is quite plasticky, all the touch points are quite soft. And now with the added air curtains, a feature that we've seen on the Verna, we've also seen it on the Grand i10. The air curtain essentially allows for better aerodynamic efficiency. It also cuts out a lot of wind noise. So as a result, they've managed to squeeze in about 9% more efficiency out of the car as well. And safety has been given greater emphasis. It comes with dual airbags, ABS are standard across the range, but the range topper that we have here comes with up to six airbags. The seats are nice and comfortable. There's never really been any complaints with the seats of the i20, so the same seats continue. They offer a decent amount of bolstering, good lumbar support. The seat squab is just the right 
length so you also have a good amount of under thigh support and in the back as well this is quite a wide body so there is a lot of shoulder room there's a decent amount of knee room and head room as well and if you're wondering yes there is an automatic variant coming out hyundai have confirmed that they're going to launch an automatic variant in may of later this year there's some speculation it might be a cvt or it could also be possibly be the six speed uh, automatic that we've seen on the verna now for all the things the i20 does right here are a couple of things that doesn't do so right starting with the handling yes this car has good ride quality but the handling not so much soft suspension rolls around quite a bit especially at highway speeds i'm the only one driving the car and the back feels a little bit sketchy that matter could be resolved by adding more weight to the car which we're going to have to test out in a more comprehensive review and to be fair to the car a lot of folks who do buy this car probably don't care much about handling to begin with in addition to that there are the question of brake brakes do still feel quite wooden quite spongy and could definitely use uh, with a lot more feedback a lot more bite coming a little bit earlier on then there is that engine again now yes the car is refined yes it has a nice air of quality to it however the engine noise still manages to cut through everything i tried even bumping up the volume on the aquamus audio system that drone of that engine noise still manages to cut through everything and it makes that really weird sounding drone i don't know how to get rid of it it just has to do with the engine itself then there are the cup holders which are only good enough for just one regular size cup and there is the question of boot space every other car in the segment offers over 300 liters of boot space the i20 manages with just 285 And then there is this my complaint with all Hyundai cars. Now let's assume that you're sneaking back home after a late night at the office with the boys. You don't want to wake up the dog or even worse the wife. So you silently tiptoe back to your door and realize you need to lock the car. And then you wake up the entire neighborhood. Why does it have to be so loud? Anyways, Ten Hag actually showed me a way around this. I guess he's learned from experience. All you have to do is make sure that you have the key fob on you and simply press the little button on the door handle and the car locks and unlocks silently as well. Now, all this aside, ladies and gentlemen, what is the new Elite i20 going to cost you? The range starts from 5.35 lakhs, which isn't too bad, but competitors in the segment top out at about 8.5 lakhs. But this the top end Elite i20 costs 9.15 lakh rupees, which does make it a quite a bit more expensive. But for that extra 65,000 bucks, you do get four more airbags. You do get access to a really nice Arkemis audio system and Hyundai's Auto Link app. So does it make it worth it? Well, why don't you let us know in the comment section below? And with that, ladies and gentlemen, the Elite i20 has always been a very tough car to criticize because it knows exactly what it is, which is a well-built, comfortable, safe, and very well-equipped hatchback. And now with the facelift and the added features, it does make a tougher case than ever before. Thank you so much for watching this video, ladies and gentlemen. Do let us know what you thought about the Elite i20 facelift in the comments below. I will see you soon. Take care. Bye bye.